So I was over listening to <laughs> a call for an uprising, and he was doing a story on this, you know, the Area 51 sideshow keeps getting more ridiculous, and I need not go over the details again about this story that everybody knows about but suffice it to say that in his video he's detailing how he feels that this is a premeditated organized um you know non-organic non-spontaneous development that has been put together by manufacturers for one reason or another to push some type of agenda and he thinks that it might be the control and flow of information and whatnot. And that certainly could be, there are other people who have talked about that as well. And so, right, we know about that, but I'm kind of concerned that there might be other things going on that he has not talked about in this video. And he was bringing up something that I found really interesting and I'll let you listen here just a second, but He's talking about how there are businesses that are utilizing and exacerbating this storm area 51 <clears throat> scenario to push product. And I was kind of looking at the commonalities of these particular items that this guy is going to talk about here in a minute. And then we're going to branch off into a potentiality for something that might be coming. I don't know for sure, but let's let's listen. Let's go. They're just giving it. More, they're giving it more uh, more traction, right? Just more and more traction instead of just killing it off. So obviously they want the traction out there. Burger King <laughs> tweeting about it. They said attention people storing Area 51. If they tell you to bring them to your leader, remember who's king. Yep, we'll remember who's king. His name's Jesus Christ. Oreo, the only peace offering accepted by aliens at Area 51 are Oreos, right? Kool-Aid getting in on it. Want to crash Area 51? Kool-Aid guy goes, oh, yeah. On Monday, Bud Light boldly declared it was not here to sponsor this mass Fox Mulder fan club on Facebook. They, they tweeted out, we'd like to be the first brand to formally announce that we will not be sponsoring the Area 51 raid. But by Wednesday, resistance was futile, and ur the urge to elbow its way into this cultural movement was just too strong. They said, screw it, free Bud Light to any alien that makes it out. <laughs> <laughs> the brand then posted a specifically designed label to welcome our new air alien overlords. <laughs> when someone asked if it was real, the brand declared, in true, hashtag nugs for Carter style, that if it gets 51,000 retweets, the beer label would be put into production. I mean, give me a break. And people think that this is some organic thing that's happening. Nothing organic like this happens unless they want it to happen. You think of, like I said, if, if I came up with some type of thing, we're going to go, and obviously the alien agenda is the most known <laughs> agenda that they push. UFOs, aliens, you know, there's aliens on Uranus, this kind of nonsense, and all these idiots, atheists believe that that's true, but they don't believe in God. They're like, yeah, there's aliens out there. There's all these planets and all these life forms. They're so dumb. It is amazing that uh, it's just amazing. But when the trumpets sound, we'll see how smart they are when they got feces running down their legs. Look, it says, we come in peace, the Bud Light thing, whether the new alien-friendly beer label actually gets made or not, it's worth admiring. So we have all these massive companies like Bud Light, Oreo, Burger King talking about it. Right? You think that if we were going to go, okay, we're storming the McMartin, you know, where the McMartin, um, the McMartin's preschool was, and we want to get underground there, and we want to see these tunnels that they covered in, and we want to bring people, you know, who can investigate the dirt and follow the tunnel trail. Okay, so the things that concern me, and well, I can certainly take a joke. I mean, some of these are really witty and silly and funny. And, you know, I can take a joke, no problem. But the things that hit me specifically, sorry, I just got to back this up, was this issue of the king. And I get it. It's Burger King. They make hamburgers. They're saying they're the king of the burgers. I, I get that. But I also know that they seed things into our consciousness. And I also agree with him that this is not organic, that somebody is doing this and developing it and pushing it for a variety of reasons. 
I just don't think he's highlighting where it could be going and what I think is a danger. And this issue of the king I take very seriously because we have an antichrist fake messiah king, king of the world who is coming. No high laws are coming. A big giant threat to civilization is coming, but wrapped up in a big giant lie. Um, so this word king is a concern to me. Just the whole overall theme of, you know, aliens is a concern to me because Bible-believing Christians know from Scripture, know very, very well that aliens are not real. They are not what they purport to be, but rather they are demonic entities who source from, I think it's Enoch 15. It talks about it really clearly that there were 200 angels that came down, disobeyed God, and had sexual union with women through rape or marriage and created this third race of entities. So angel, human, number three would be these giants, these Nephilim, Raphaim, whatever you want to call them. And that's how we get uh, David having to cut off Goliath's head. So that spirit leaves that body that God didn't make. And they are these demonic entities who are bothering people who engage in witchcraft. So you've got this whole alien thing. You've got this coming deception with a false antichrist coming. It feels like it's being scheduled, potentially. I guess this event is supposed to happen on September 20th. Well, that's kind of a concern to me because just 10 days later, when you go get into Stellarium and you've got your Revelation 12 and you're looking at the feasts and you're seeing when the annual uh, autumn feasts are coming, the fifth feast called the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, the day and hour no man knows, Rosh Hashanah. It has so many names. Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. So many names. <clears throat> That's just 10 days later on the 30th. And we are one of these years expecting Christ the King on a sliver new moon, sliver new moon, a Rosh Hadash to come and fulfill this feast of trumpets he is the king he is coming and so this is a little bit of a concern to me that you know the star is being seated into people's minds the sliver new moon the king king is coming <clears throat> aliens we know that from revelation 12 it talks about how satan will be thrown down and the church is not going to be here for that the real church there's a fake church it's totally going to be here for that because they didn't get born again. But the born again church is leaving as it talks about in Revelation 3.10. We're out of here, ek, out of. And so we have authority over Satan. Satan can't come here and do anything with the church full of the Holy Spirit here. So we're leaving. Well, <clears throat> you know, this whole issue of aliens, this whole issue of the king coming, this whole issue of, of the sliver moon it really tends to make me wonder if we're being set up, the people on this earth, for this false <clears throat> alien deception and, and the origin backstory coming of this, this Antichrist. And I want to show you something, because I don't think a lot of people pay attention to this. So when we're talking about the feasts, this one here, they combine Passover and unleavened bread into one, which is fine. I don't really care. And so, but it's one and then two and then first fruits and then Pentecost. So these were the four that they combined the first two together for the, the lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So those are fulfilled. Those are done. Right. And so we're here in the church age hanging out and we're day by day by day by day getting closer to the point where the Meshua is going to come and he is going to now fulfill, <coughs> pardon me, this chunk of these three feasts, right, that had a, a foreshadow in the Old Testament, but now he fulfills them just like we saw Jesus do with these four feasts. So we're in this period of time, the church age, where it's important to be saved. And one of these days, and it could be this year, he is going to come and it's on a prescribed feast day. There isn't anything imminent about it in terms of random. Imminent does not mean random. Imminent means soon. So the soon return of Christ could be coming. And if that is the case, 
then the soon return of the Antichrist would also be the case. And I'm concerned about through all this advertising and whatnot, if that is in fact what is being seeded into people's consciousness. Now, until it happens, we won't know, but this is why the Bible tells us to watch for the day and hour no man knows, which is the exact title name of this beast right here. <clears throat> and then you have the seven, you have Jacob's trouble and you have the seven years. And it's kind of funny how they did that because I would actually extend it from here to here. But anyhow, um, the point being is that you have two stories being told about two Christs that are coming. And the accurate biblical one from Leviticus 23 is that Christ comes exactly on this day to fulfill this day called the day in our no man knows, as well as Rosh Hashanah and many other names. The Antichrist, Israel will tell you, actually is coming imminent as in random, as in could be any day. And I'm going to show you that in this uh, divine image book that Rabbi Cohen from Noahide.org wrote. But let's just glom onto this for a second. Imminent means about to happen. So is Christ about to come? Absolutely. But it's on a feast day. It's not random. And the synonyms, it's hard to say that word, synonyms are impending, a hand, close, near, approaching, fast, approaching, coming, forthcoming, on the way, about to happen, upon us, in store, and the like. You know, threatening, menacing, expected, anticipated, so on and so forth. If you look up random, which is what the Gentile churches tried to change the word imminent to mean, and it doesn't, Random, haphazard, casual, uh, by accident rather than design. Oh, just whenever that it doesn't have a, a definite aim, a definite fixed goal or any type of regular procedure. But the feasts absolutely have a definitive setup as to how they are done. So, you know, we could explore more of that. But just suffice it to say the imminent only means near, not random. What's kind of freaky is if you go check out this book, Divine Image, it does in fact talk about this Antichrist that they say is their Christ, and his coming is imminent. In fact, towards the end of this chapter, it says, in general, mankind must strive to perform more acts of goodness to bring the Mashiach. In kindness, every person is mandated to learn and be aware of the messianic redemption and strengthen his faith in Mashiach's ultimate and imminent arrival. That's what they say, imminent. It could be any time. So, and then backing it up, it says here, when will Mashiach come? Jews anticipate the arrival of Mashiach, the Messiah, every day. Our prayers are full of requests to God to usher in the messianic era, even in the gates of the gas chambers, Many Jews saying, Anai Mamin, uh, I believe in the coming of Mashiach. However, the Talmud, which is Jewish black magic, by the way, states that there is a predestined time when Mashiach will come. And if we are meritorious, he will come even before that predestined time. And... It says here... So this does not rule out the possibility of Mashiach coming today. And now if we merited it, merit it, it should be noted that Torah authorities are of the opinion that we are in the epoch or age of the Mashiach. And Lubavitcher Rebbe stated on numerous occasions that the Messianic redemption is imminent. So in other words, they're teaching that the Israeli Jewish Messiah of the Talmud, black magic, his coming is imminent, but your Lord is fulfilling feast days. He didn't say you can't know the day. He said you don't know the day. And when you dig into the Greek, and we'll do a part two so I can show you that, it's because of various opinion and it's because people don't know their feast days. So you have an imminent coming false messiah, and I wonder if all this advertising is, is positioning people for that coming deception. Then you've got the Lord Jesus Christ coming on the day and hour no man knows, this day. 
Join me for part two, please. Thanks. Bye.